Bradaloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic. If you own a lake home or have a pond on your property, call my friends at Aquaside so you can get rid of the weeds and algae that are freaking the kids out. They have a complete line of lake and control products that take care of that stuff. The products are easy to use. They work quickly. They're registered with the EPA and DNR. There is no need to let weeds or gunk overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside today. Describe your problem. They'll get you the right products. And your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight king. Hail you! And now from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. Mr. Hauser, I need to mention that I forgot to include on yesterday's program our fine friends at Renewal by Anderson that normally bring us this day in history, but because Joe is out for the remainder of the week, Rook and I just decided we ain't doing this day in history. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned our friends at Renewal by Anderson. And our feedback has been very positive for not, <laughs> for we, we, we love the sponsorship, but our feedback right. for not doing that has right. been That's way too much work. Well, uh, how do people get through their day without knowing what the temperature was 63 right. years ago today? Yeah. Or what Alexander Ramsey did uh, when he arrived here uh, via steamboat. He lit know? one up. I yeah, think. right. Yep. right. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was a big fat stogie. Right. Although one of the things that was cool a couple of days ago, in fact, because I, I, I brought it up, the, the Rapid Dam bridge, or excuse me, dam down in The Mankato. Rapid Dam Dam. We Rapid Dam Dam. Say it five me. times fast no, real quick. No, because I'll so, get in trouble. <laughs> but <laughs> I attempted to go there. Uh, last Thursday, you can't even get, because I it was inspired by this day in history, it, for whatever reason it came up, and you can't even get to the bridge, because now they've closed off the bridge, because they're worried about the bridge now coming down as a result of all the water down down that way. Yes, which is a little alarming. In fact, Governor Walls is down there today. I believe his, I think he's going to be there at 1230. Did you, uh, did you happen to see the governor's comments about uh, Joe Biden? He was, I don't well, know which what, ones. Well, he was on Fox, uh, but which surprised me. He I, said and, uh, the reason that President Biden may have been a little off his game for the debate. A little? Was because um, he had called Governor Walls, he had called him because, to worry about the flooding issue. So he thought maybe that was... Um, that was t- the reason. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't think Where's so. Where's all that water coming from? I'm not sure that we know that, do we? Right. Um, but that, but he said that on an outlet this morning. <laughs> I would. I, I should find it. I'm going to find it right now. If you could find that, because I. Because I, I get all my news from Twitter, Tom. I don't know if you know this about me or not, but Joe loves that. I, d- right. I don't uh, <laughs> know that among all the things that might be top of mind for any president, that the flooding in Minnesota uh, would be. Up there, given Ukraine and Israel. Okay. Here we go. This is from Alpha News. Walls suggests that Biden's phone call to check in on Minnesota flooding took away from his debate prep time. Minnesota's Democratic governor continues to stop. We did it for two him. weeks. Yeah. So anyway, so he says that, and I don't. I'm going to see what outlet that that the uh, the governor was on. He had a poor night. Governor Tim Walls said uh, he was on PBS's News Hour on on Friday. And he had suggested that. Uh, wow. Well, that is uh, that's a new interpretation of of what transpired. God, you are night. so good at, at at being diplomatic. Deferring I, and yes. seriously, I am so impressed with how good you are at that, man. You, I, 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 I I'm in awe. I'm really in awe. Well, and I gotta know, go shut the door because my kids are talking. You oh, know, that's okay. I, you know, as they say, no opinions on the news, and I uh, do not offer uh, a lot of opinion. I will uh, offer opinions when people question news coverage and the way we cover things okay i don't meaning you were biased or you were on yes you were way too it was yes or that or for instance the other day and you guys follow me on on x or twitter yep. or whatever and i i like to mix it up with yes the, uh, you do <laughs> but but only and i try to be i'm respectful with especially with anyone who uses their real name sure. on on there but 
Uh, here's a guy I blocked the other day, and then I... Hey, butthead, you were a lefty, <laughs> flaming liberal. And then I, I made a screenshot of it as I blocked him, because at some point I will just use this as an example of what I'm up against every day. Some guy was badgering me about something. I forget even what it was. But here's was it debate-related, maybe? I, I, it could have been. It sure. could have been anything related. Trust me. If it's politics, I, I can be thrown under any bus. But I, how do you respond to a guy and hold anybody accountable whose Twitter handle is guess who farted one? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that wasn't one of my kids, was it? Yeah, it wait a minute. Hey, Can I get them in here? I'd like to find out. But, you know, when you're up against that level of intellect on social media, I mean, I, I might have I might have said, I'm going to use that name, you know, when I was like 12, yeah. but I would not do it, you know, as an adult. And then this person is somehow trying to hold me accountable for some uh, perceived misdeed, and I just didn't, uh, I didn't understand that. But uh, then there, w there was uh, somebody, uh, a c couple of exchanges I've had. Uh, when I, I tweeted yesterday about uh, Nicole Mitchell's situation, latest, uh, situation yeah. let's call it a situation. Yeah. And, um, and then somebody's comment was, and he does use his real name, and I, I, I tried to be respectful, but he said, you know, there is other news today. And it was like he thinks that's the only thing I covered yesterday. On any given day, I could co cover any number of stories. Right. And the station, yeah, I, and so I, I sent him KSTP.com. Feel free to peruse right. what— It's not what, all the, Mitchell all the time. No, the width and, I did one tweet about it yesterday. And I think, I'm sure he was referring to the Trump uh, verdict or, or the U.S. Supreme Court right. ruling involving Trump. And I had also done a story on that yesterday, so I had also put that. So, but, but that was a mild one. And this guy, to his credit, used his real name. I assume it was his real name. It was a very common name. So that's the other thing you don't know. You assume Harry. There was no. He. There was no picture. <laughs> there was no picture with it. So you, you really don't know. Use his middle initial too, right? right? Yeah. Okay. But it 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 is just remarkable to me the people who will, especially an event like that debate. If you don't have a headline on your story mm -hmm. that just torches Joe Biden, then, oh, you didn't watch the same debate. I, I, re, I, I didn't even cover the debate that night because I was, I was out sick for a few days last week. I just retweeted an, an AP story and an ABC News story, and the headline on the AP one was something like Biden, something about Biden's halting performance and Trump's struggle with the truth or something, which was a pretty good, you know, a first Assessment. crack at it. Right, you sure. know, in terms of if you're not a flamethrower from mm -hmm. the left or right, from the left, you would say uh, 90 minutes of lies from Trump. And if you're from the right, it was 90 minutes of incoherence right. uh, about Biden. This was down the middle. Oh, the, the people. And then they don't even bother to read the story. They only read the headline. And so they're badgering me about a headline. A, I did not you write. Didn't write. <laughs> didn't write. B, it was clearly something I reposted, and but I don't repost things that I don't think are are worth right. people reading. Right. And it, it just and that went on for hours, and it, it just it, the struggle is real. To your to, credit, though, I, and I, I would say, uh, and to Pat Kessler's credit. I know I'm not, not that I who yes I'm telling you I don't know who the nine guy who the eleven guy is the political reporter John Croman at eleven yeah okay uh, I don't know your politics I don't know Kessler's politics so I mean you both have been as far as your reporting you know yep here we go here it's this these are the numbers this is what our poll says but speaking to what you were talking about Tom we're just and and I don't know this is fairly recent where we have become just so angry about everything relating to politics that is that recent and i get I, I get it it's it's going back a while but it's it's gotten it took a okay yeah it's the political season especially in a, in a year of a presidential election it's going to be a little contested a little heated, but we haven't nothing like what we've seen the last eight years two things about that and i and i hate because i i hate it when people blame the media sure. for everything uh, but I don't mind blaming social media because 
everyone now has access. Like, uh, sure. guess who farted one? Right. Has access to Twitter. <laughs> Can you make sure you isolate that? On I Twitter? will. Yes. Okay, we'll good. use that for okay, future good. reference. Yeah, right. yes. Thank you. That's our new drop. He can glom on to my uh, Twitter feed, make comments, get other, you know, guess who farted two, could then chime in and say, yeah, you're right, I'm, I'm outraged. Mm -hmm. And so it's so much easier to light the fuse a little trolling, people. trolling. Yep. They, and, because you could be sitting in your living room. Yep, and then everybody all of a sudden, you know, starts getting all ginned up about this. And and so the 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 anger is not now people have an outlet to express their anger right. and and and, th and through significant ways i mean there's a lot of followers of twitter and instagram and facebook luckily instagram has not gotten too political somehow and almost everybody on there uses their real name to the large extent same thing with facebook i would agree, I would agree same with thing you. with facebook and i think the reason those are more civil uh areas is because people are using their real names and you wouldn't believe how often I get people who write in and say, well, Tom, the reason we don't use our real name is because we're going to get threats and I, I might lose my job don't say and anything. all these things. And I'm going, well, then keep your bizarre thoughts to yourself, right. for instance, and that's a possibility. And maybe if you would lose your job or get threats, maybe what you're saying is a little bit out there. Right. And maybe you deserve to get threats or <laughs> lose your job. Right. And and I'm t I, I don't want to use any specific examples, but there's a wide spectrum of examples where you can have an intelligent conversation and disagreement about various issues without immediately going to, you know, the viper mode where you're gonna. And I, I I should just I should look and just see if there's any. Examples even from today, and then guess who farted just came up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> never live that one down. Right. But uh, uh, it and just almost any uh, given day, um, there are. I should see if I could find some of the ones about the. But debate. who wants to waste all the time and effort? Uh, you know what? Um, I've had presidents that didn't. My pres. My guy didn't win. Yeah, I didn't say I want to move to Canada. Right. He's not my president. Um, all that kind of stuff. I don't have the time or energy for that hate or anger. And I know people out there that that's what they thrive on. And you know, and, and some of the times when I do take the, and I don't always take the time to respond uh, to some of these people. I wouldn't. But uh, sometimes you just feel like you have to <laughs> because yeah. you just can't. Some of this stuff is so nonsensical, it's just hard to yes. uh, to leave it uh, unchallenged. Uh, but here was the headline that set people off when I posted this the other night. And by the way, my previous tweet had been about uh, Kirby Puckett. Okay. <laughs> so wow. I have a wide spe spectrum of When he was alive things. or a post? Uh, no. no. <laughs> okay. By the way, he had the highest career average of any right-handed batter since World War II. Oh, I saw that same yeah. tweet. Yeah, that's and great. And so that's Super 70s. By sports. the way, they need to bring back those powder blue uh, Twins jerseys. Those are, those they are, occasionally do. Those are sweet. Excuse yeah. me. Do I have a cough button over here? Uh, I you think you mute, do. Mute. Um, but are, are we, we going to be okay? Do no, we need I'm to call fine. the medic? Because I, I see now the one, the button that says dump, does that mean I got to go to the bathroom? Or does that mean <laughs> no, I no, dump good. the whole means, program? Yeah, number one or two. Hit mic two for me, will you? And then we have a big uh, Tampa Bay. And what is, we have a Tampa Bay yeah, button. Yeah, what is the Tampa Bay button? Tampa Bay button is just... Uh, you know. I have tuberculosis. Yes. yes. Yeah, right. So I've got yes. to hit that button. Uh, anyway, here is the headline that set people off. Debate takeaways. Trump confident even when wrong. Biden halting even with facts on his side. That uh, was viewed 10,000 times. It uh, I got uh, 57 comments about it. And... Uh, I, but again, keep in mind, um, like Tom, I like you. We'll still watch, but your stock just went down twenty points. Uh, be better, Tom. Wow. S uh, let's see. Um, well, I agree with that. You should always try to be better, Tom. Did they at least give you knee pads, Tom? Oh Whoa. my God! Uh, and that was oh, and that was a guy who actually used his own name. So I let that one go. Uh, if you're going to cover a Trump lie, you better cover one of Biden's lies too. My God, what a headline, Tom! I mean, there's nothing wrong with that headline. Only the only thing it didn't do was satisfy these people who live in the 
anti-Biden echo chamber. Right. And right. it was, yeah, I thought that headline, and it was from Associated Press. But it just goes to show you that it, there, there's just a certain demographic of people on both sides of the political aisle that are just never going to be satisfied with anything, whether it's coverage, whether it's actually, it, report, it doesn't matter. They're just going to be offended and they're going to be mad regardless of what's put out there, right? From a from yep. a consumption standpoint, whether it's in and, print or whether it's on television, social right. media, whatever. And here's where we get into an example of of chasing our tails on all of this. So I later then posted a a fact check that you know a, a, a number of um, outlets had done fact checks, and I know CNNs. Uh, said that uh, Trump lied or told mistruths or passed along misinformation 30 times and Biden nine times. And so and nine is that's a lot. A, that's what we're gauging it on. Yeah, okay. but, but nine is still a right. lot. Uh, but 30 is a lot, a lot, as yes. my yes. kids would say when they were younger. Yeah. Um, and then, and then so somebody writes in, please share unbiased fact checks so people can get <laughs> honest information. And then I wrote back, what do you consider unbiased? Everything from your echo chamber? Why would you start caring about honest information now? That was my response. Um, uh, and then somebody else, always nuance, Hauser. The AP has been a great purveyor of misinformation. Who's checking them? It's mm. like, uh, how do you, what, what the people who write things like that don't understand right. is that, and this goes even for you two, we all answer to bosses right. who, yep. who have a financial stake in what we're doing, whether it's a podcast, whether it's AM radio, yep. FM radio, or television. And if we start putting out stuff that is dishonest, it is misinformation, it is biased, uh, we're going to lose our jobs. You'll be called out. Yeah. And, where and we matters. should. Where it matters. Yes. You'll be called and, out where it matters. Well, let's be clear, though. When I do that on my show with Fred Aloni, no one's listening. Okay, so. So there I'm always, okay. Well, that's a good point. It's not a perfect <laughs> uh, scenario. But <laughs> but, but I get your overall yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, people, sure. just, people don't understand that, that, you know, we're all accountable because our station does not want to face a lawsuit. Right. And whether it's about a court case or politics or whatever, we do not want to be taken to the legal woodshed. Whereas, guess who farted one has no concern right. about spreading uh, malicious lies and untruths because he's a moron right. who uses a name like that on Twitter and then tries to pass off his opinion as if it matters to anyone. That's why... I block people like him right. because I, I sent a broadside toward him, then said, see you later. See you later. Speaking see you of later. see you later, let's take a break. We'll be back. See you later. Yes. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times. And that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts. And he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell them you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. If you want to have some fun and win some money while watching your favorite teams, you need to join over 5 million players who have won over $2 billion at Underdog Fantasy. Just go to underdogfantasy.com or download their easy-to-use app. Use the promo code GARAGELOGIC to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. You can use locals to win some money like I did with the Vikings' Aaron Jones or a team favorite like Josh Jacobs. You could win up to 1,000 times your money by choosing higher or lower on player stats like 
touchdowns, home runs, three-pointers, and lots more. You pick who's hot and who's not and turn your sports opinion into real money. Download the app today. Use the code GARAGELOGIC to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Every player, every yard they pick up, just select higher or lower on underdog. Must be 18+, plus, 19+, plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19+, plus in Colorado for some games, 21+, plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP and 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. Here's a guy. Oh, I didn't get the deputy mayor sounder. Hold on. Oh, you can do that. Hold I'll on. hold off. Hold on. I'll hold off on Escape with Us vacations. Here we go. That's Cue Escape the with Us vacations. Joe Suchere here. You're listening to a mayor deputized by me in my absence. Please give him the due privileges and respect that all garage logicians would give their guests. To Tom Thank Hauser. <laughs> What microphone that was that? I don't know. Not In a, a very closet good one. somewhere. That Not was a very good bad one. edit. Right. Bad edit. Escape with us. <clears throat> Escape with us. Vacations is putting on a wonderful trip to Croatia. Many garage logicians are going on this trip, and we're going to have a blast. The uh, Adriatic King sold out. The Adriatic Queen has a couple of cabins left, but I think it's pretty much too late for you to get on board. Maybe uh, next year, if there's another trip, uh, we will include you. Planning is the key. Teresa and Maria, my two sisters that have been in the industry for decades, are very busy getting all the paperwork in order. And that's what's really nice. I haven't lifted a finger to do this. I've got my passport ready. That's it. Now I'm being told what time you're doing everything. They plan it all out for you. And this is not just a big trip like Croatia. If you want them to plan a trip to Cancun, if you want to plan a trip to Disney World, whatever the case may be, Poland, we were going to go to Poland, but COVID killed that, so I can't wait to go back there. Escape with us vacations. It's cheap insurance to have them plan everything for you, get all your uh, T's crossed, your I's dotted, and I don't care if it's just a mini vacation or if it's a major event. If you're going for the holidays, book now. You can get a lot cheaper right now when you book way ahead of time. They will advise you. 651-788-4338. They're a small business, but they are a big company for travel agency wise they're going to take care of you they've taken care of me they've taken care of suchi they've taken care of reavers i'll tell you what escape with us vacations.com is the website book your trip wherever you're going so they can be an advocate for you if something goes wrong and believe me things go wrong in the industry but they'll get you back on track 651-788-4338 they're the best in the business i wouldn't go with anybody else escape with us vacations.com and now it's my turn. Yes, now it is. Turn. Where are you going? Who gets to go on that? Uh, uh, they, dare I call know, it a Well, I, I do think there's one cabin left, but you have to share it next to Rook, and he does like to wear the Speedo. Oh, God. Yeah, and I snore. You know, so that uh, that's going to be the one thing. Simultaneously, do you wear a Speedo and snore that's like if you're I sleeping snore. by the it's pool? It's a little too tight. Yeah, it's a Speedo. And he likes to cuddle, so you got to get in there, Tom. <laughs> Croatian spooning is the best I heard. <laughs> You've just given me a hundred reasons not to sign up. <laughs> when you tell people that you're going to Croatia, people look and either they haven't know, know nothing about it and go, why are you going there? Or the people that know about it go, oh, my God, you've got to go to Montenegro. You've got to go. It's apparently it's beautiful. And I uh, I can't wait. Uh, can I share with you my uh, trip to Croatia? Let me guess. Yes. You're running another marathon. Yeah, the Croatian so- marathon right. is 28 miles. <laughs> <laughs> All marathons are 26.2. You know, you've lost. You're a loser. You've lost every marathon you've been in. Have you oh, won one? A, have you that, come in top five? One? It's time to hang it up, Hauser. Why are you ripping him yeah, for running a marathon? Win. He's, he right, got the, he's got the no, medals he's right. in the top six of, right. of the world, and he still can't win right. Grandma's if marathon. If you don't win, what's the point of the exercise? Right. right. That's, I just realized that's the camp that. rookie comes. I yeah. respected you with your, what is it, the top six? What's that medal called? 
the uh, achievement, the, the six world marathon majors. Yes, and that's a big, huge. And I, I was praising him, and now I've just had the revelation that he's lost every marathon he's run okay. by a, and by a lot. Yeah, you're yeah. Not, what are you not? Yeah, because I mean, he's on the team of of Rook and Reavers, where I was almost passed out walking my wife to the bus to get on the <laughs> thing to go up and run the marathon. She's like, "Are you breathing heavy?" I said. I'm really sorry. I was a rough one last night. No, I, I, my, I, full disclosure, my son years ago ran the grandma's half marathon. That's what I just ran last Saturday. Huh? And he had never run a marathon before, and he had you he know, still f- hadn't. It was a half yeah. <laughs> yeah, Oh, yeah. He still hasn't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we were in charge of running to give him water. And so I, I saw him coming, and I tried to keep pace. And I'm running, and I'm running, and I'm, I'm basically, I handed him the thing. I must have run 15 yards. Run. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> holy crap. And I, had, I did have a respect for it. I went 15 yards, and I was huffing and puffing, going, I'm never going to do that. But uh, I do respect him. I'm just teasing you. Uh, you know, I, most runners, you know, because all but one of us think, oh, well, really all but all but 10 of us in any given race think, oh, yeah, we got a chance to win this. Yeah. So the rest of us just try to beat your own previous times or – Finish in the top half of your age group, or sure. the like. The average time in Grandma's half marathon was two seventeen. Uh, I ran it in two o four. I yeah. had an up and running with pneumonia. I was hoping to break right. two hours, major which dengue. I often do. Major Wait, dengue. Yeah, major dengue. What did you run it in? Two o four. Wow, and that's pretty which, good. You know, it's my my fastest up there. I think it was one forty nine. But as you get older, you slow down a little bit. But I always look at that average time because, and as long as I'm still passing people half my age near the end, that's good enough for sure. me. Sure, keeps you be, going. Doesn't keeps need to be a, a lot boost. of them. Yeah, it's kind of like the one like when you're playing golf. And you have the one good drive because yep. a couple holes earlier you're going. I'm never. I'm giving this Eight game up. Snowman. Well, and the way selling that... my clubs on eBay when <laughs> yes. I get home, and then you hit one good drive and go. Maybe I'll take a lesson or go well, to the range go. tomorrow. Well, and the one thing Jess always told me because she ran Grandma's three or four times, and then the Twin Cities twice, and then Boston. Mm. But she said you look at certain marks and you're saying, okay. I'm now a third of the way, or now yeah. I'm over half the. So that's like almost it, you kind of get juice again when you like when you cross the. She said, "Is it Superior Street? Is that when you take the left to go down?" Yeah, you go to, up. You go up Lemon Drop Hill past the Glenshee cool. Mansion. Yes, yes. And it's a two-layered hill, and then you get to the top, and then you uh, you you veer right a little bit. Then there's a nice long downhill, and that's what she said. Yeah. When you get well, to you the try downhill, not to fall. <laughs> yes. Well, but she said it. You kind of get a little bit of. Uh, like I said, juice because you realize, okay, I am almost there. Yes, like that's the the the, the, the mindset. The hardest thing about grandmas is, and I'll get back to my Croatia story in a minute. Sure. But you you are running down uh, Superior Street or whatever it is in downtown Duluth, and then then you eventually have to take a right that's a short little uphill. Then you're back downhill. Then it winds back into downtown, and then you can see. I remember the first time I ran it back in 1989. You could hear people cheering people at the finish. Mm. You could see people off to Love the left that. to go. It's not Love far that. now. But you don't realize, especially the first time you've run it, you got to go another half mile up. Then you take a left. You go up a fairly steep bridge to the top by the deck yeah. center, yeah. the uh, Duluth Entertainment and Complex, Conference Center. Yeah. Yeah. And then you come down. Then you come around the William K. Irvin ship. Now all of a sudden you're zigzagging. and you're going... Oh, can this just when be this over? Yeah. It's, it's like when you, you get your kids on a on a on a long yes. trip. Are we there yet? Are can we, we be done? Can we be done? Now? Can we be done? <laughs> oh my god! Can we get out of the car now? And uh, but I still love grandmas. I've run it now. This was my twentieth straight year, but I've done it twenty two times overall. Thirteen half marathons, nine marathons. So I got to level up because I'm one tired. of those people. I got to get to ten. I can't just stop yeah, at yeah, nine. Even, yeah, on a, on a milestone. Say, yeah, a I, milestone. Did, I, wanna, I did that ten times. You Seven don't wanna, times. You don't want to say about ten. You got to say I did it ten times. Right, right. So I'll do it one more time. Probably they have their fiftieth anniversary coming up in two years. So probably okay. that. Wow. But anyway, back to Croatia. Yeah. Maybe I'll run it with you. You should do that. I don't think so. You, you can pull him. me in a wagon. You, if you're keeping any audio clips, you keep, keep that going, one. Tom. Not a you chance. Keep going, Tom. You can pull me in a red wagon. Do I get? Yeah. Do I get to ride a bike? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so anyway, way back when, I think it might have been 2010. I guess no, it's no longer ago than that, because I think I was still living in Egan at the time. I know I was. So it was like 2003 or four. I went to uh, Bosnia with uh, Governor Paleni 
to visit Minnesota National Guard troops who were there keeping the peace, mm. you know, because this was not long after the, the war there right. mm-hmm. in, in the 90s. So it, there were still a lot of tensions, and to the great credit of the men and women of the Minnesota National Guard, they get called upon on that duty a lot wow. because they're really good at what they do. So we went around Christmas time to go visit the troops. Well, we ran into some foul weather. There are uh, at the time there were no direct flights from Minneapolis into Bosnia. Sure, um, it was still a little dicey situation back then. But we, so we flew in to uh, Budapest, and the weather was so fogged in that we we were supposed to fly on, I think, to Sarajevo, and then go to Bosnia for, uh, to yeah, our yeah. to our the forward operating base we were going with the National Guard from there. And we ended up, we were fogged in. So then, so the the flights, there wasn't going to be another flight until like the next day. And the governor was on kind of a tight schedule and we wanted to get there in time for the the holidays and whatnot. So uh, it was even too foggy for the National Guard choppers to fly. There was some talk about having them fly and pick us up in Budapest. If you look at the map, it's, it's not, you know, you go... There's Hungary and there's Croatia right. and there's Bosnia, right. it, it, but they couldn't do it because it was too foggy. So somehow, somewhere along the line, somebody decided, well, let's rent a bunch of cars and we'll drive oh God. to Bosnia through Croatia from Budapest. Okay. So it's the governor. How far of a drive Some is of that? his staff. I'm looking remember. at the map right now. It took, it took all night and we're driving through the night. And so there were a few media members. There was the governor, there were members of the state patrol, National Guard, general. Um, And so we had, it was a convoy of about eight cars, as I recall, eight or ten. So we drove through the night in this fog in an area that had been a war zone not that long before. And I'll never forget, as we're driving through Croatia, every now and then, just like you see here in the States, if you're driving through Nebraska— or wherever where it's flat and desolate. Right. All of a sudden, there's like a truck stop, and the lights are all glowing. I'll never forget going into this truck stop, and we're all looking for food in a truck stop. We, there was no Super Americas right. or yeah. Speedways, yeah. but there was a place that had these uh, burgers called Kentucky Fried Burgers, and then you get them and you heat them up in a microwave. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're living on these, you know, because it was the closest thing that looked sure. like Food, food that we could yeah, recognize. Right, yeah. So we're eating these things. And, Meanwhile, it's skunk. Right? Right. You know, and then we're in line for the bathroom. There was an outdoor Ooh. bathroom. And you're in line at a, at a for a men's room with the governor and the general who runs the Minnesota National Guard. Who and all these first? people. And it was just, you know, the media went last. I'll oh, just so the TV guy that. got in there first. No, absolutely not. Well, in and, fact, I think what happened, Rook, was uh, plenty of walked out and said, hey, sorry about that one, Tom. Yeah, you might want to wait five <laughs> You might want to give that one there, a minute. Yeah. <laughs> There's some Kentucky Fried in there, I'll tell you right now. He's in there now. doing one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Governor, that's okay. Sorry, sorry I'll Tim. Catch, I'll catch the next one. Yeah, I'm right. catch I'm the good. next you one. Know uh, by the way, just shy of eight hours, depending upon your route, Yeah. from, was, from Budapest to Bosnia. Yeah, so we drove right to the border uh, of Croatia and Bosnia. Does okay. It, yep. So, and, yep. the weird, and then a National Guard convoy met us there. And I, to this day, I don't know what happened to the rental cars, but I was leaving that Wasn't to the National problem. Guard and the Paletti. It's no longer Not my, my problem. Not my problem, right. So we drop off the cars. But the thing that I remember was this convoy. They had, you know, one of those, um, one of the, you know, they had the armored vehicles with the guys with the guns in the yeah, in the yeah. back. Like Rat Patrol, yeah, yeah, essentially. Yes. Guys with the goggles, you know, yes. looked really cool. Yes. And, uh, and so we get there, and now it was like starting to be like close to daylight, and then you could see the pock marks in all the buildings, you know, mm. where bombs and missiles oh, wow. and oh, bullets wow. had hit. Then you realize, yeah, this really was a war zone Holy not crap. that long ago. Wow. And then we, we drove on to, uh, I believe it was called Forward Operating Base McGovern, sticks in my mind. This is a number of years ago. But what we essentially did was we followed the Minnesota National Guard. They were still going door to door looking for... Uh, unspent ordnance oh, and geez. munitions left behind from the war. Because you got to remember, they're lobbing these missiles back and forth. Sometimes they don't go off. Sure. And so they're like some farmer out in 
in Bosnia will find one in a field and haul it back to the barn. Oh my God! Or all this stuff, and so. Uh, they, you know, we went out on this convoy. They would go up door to door and they'd ask them, have they found anything like this? You wouldn't believe how often they would say, oh, yeah, follow me. And then they'd There's find pe- something. Oh, and so then they'd have to to wow. mark it for then like an explosives team to come and either disarm it or defuse it or blow it up or something so that it it wouldn't be a problem. And the, the amazing thing and I remember the thing I was most fearful of. They said when you go there, there were a lot of haphazard minefields all over. Stay on the pavement. Stay on the pavement. Yeah. And I'll tell you, that's you stuck, don't have to tell me twice. That stuck with me for a few months after I got back. Like I remember the day after I got back, and I was living in Egan at the time. And I remember going down. My newspaper is down at the end of the driveway, and I would usually the straightest point was from my front door Diagonal. across the yeah. lawn. To the uh, to the newspaper at the end of the driveway, but when I got back from Bosnia, it was nope. Stay on the sidewalk, go over to the driveway. I don't know what my wife had set up while I was right, gone. Right. She may have set up a minefield. Sure. Or a trap. So, but it, it's amazing how that type of thing you know gets in your head. But you know, and it, it, the, the shooting war had stopped. But I'll tell you, these men the and women of the of Minnesota National Guard. They get put in a lot of hazardous situations. We they kept us at a distance while they were up asking what was going on, and then they w- when they would find something that that was something that they think was uh, what do they call it inert. Oh, it was okay. no longer you know they would they would show us that you know they could tell that this thing had been disarmed, but it we was like this. Hey, I'm on the pavement. You don't have to. Sh- <laughs> I trust you. I trust you. Stay back. But one final thing, yeah. I know before we take a break, my favorite. Thing was this to give you an idea of how television technology has changed, and in terms of being able to uh, transmit a story back. This was in the early days of being able to send video via internet. Because remember, this is the mm. early two thousands. Mm. So we went to the Holiday Inn in Sarajevo. This is our last stop because we were flying out of Sarajevo. And I don't know if you remember, uh, Reavers. If you Google Holiday Inn Sarajevo, okay, that is the hotel where the snipers uh, during the war used to. Take the high ground, and do you remember this video? It used to scare the crap out of me. They would just pick off people walking down the street. Oh, uh, wow. could be little old ladies oh, wow. with shopping bags walking down the street, and they would they would For gun them reason, down just just to, just to raise hell. Wow! And so all of a sudden, the Holiday Inn is now back as a Holiday Inn back then. It had been taken over, but it's now a Holiday Inn again. And when we were up on one of the upper floors. And you look down, and you could see exactly mm. the view they had from up there. And did Were you see anything on? about it? I'm seeing it, and I also— what, what, is it, what does it say? Well, I'm on TripAdvisor. You can get a room there for 83 bucks if you're still interested. Oh. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's talking about it, the eventful past of, of, the, of the historic hotel. Yeah. But this is chilling. Oh, it is. Were they reminiscent of on Milosevic guys? I think so. You know, I have forgotten, but it was— Okay. It was, you know, it was terrorist. He was a bad guy. It was okay, terrorist. Yeah. Yeah. And and so we're up there. So now here we are. I was with our chief photographer, Joe Caffrey, who sure. I still you guys know yep. Joe, I still work with Joe. For sure. And we were feeding a story back that was like two or three minutes long, and it took like eight hours for it to transmit the circle via of, the, the circle internet. of thought. Yep. Oh my god. And then if the chain would ever be broken, you had to start it oh. restart it. Because otherwise it would stop and then you're gonna miss Right. So the hotel was built for the 1984 Winter Olympics yes. is what it's yep. is what it's saying. Yep, in the former Yugoslavia. Yes, correct. And it also 2014 marked the 100th anniversary of the assassination of I'm going to butcher this name. Uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, that started uh, World War One. That started World War One, yeah. exactly. So th- that's got an extensive. But what do you read about the Holiday Inn snipers? Do you see? Uh, uh, I'm scrolling down. That should have been in the 90s. Uh, 1992. Yeah, and what does it say? It April was, 6, 1992, as demonstrators amassed uh, outside the Bosnian Parliament building and then marched in the hotel, shots were allegedly fired from within the building by snipers loyal to, uh, Ker- is it Ker- Karadzic? The hotel was then stormed by the Bosnian government forces, and the snipers were arrested, by which time he and his entourage had fled. Bosnian Serb forces were surround, surrounding the city, and in the following days and weeks, uh, the siege tightened. Numerous international news agencies established their bureau in the hotel, and for the next three years, their employees were the hotel's most regular paying guests. Yeah, and we were— wow. uh, so that was uh, April 6, 1992. So we had a long history of uh, the media being yeah. there. So we were there 10 years later— 
Uh, but still, just knowing that history, it was very, you know, and it was Eerie, fairly peaceful yeah. at that time. But but I remember Joe and I still joke about it. We sat there for eight hours, and you just had to sit there and stare, you know, like you said, the circle of yeah, death, yeah. waiting. If that thing stops circling, it means the chain has been broken. you got to start your video over. And I remember a couple of bottles of wine and maybe some beers may have <laughs> been sure. consumed yes. while we were sitting there waiting for this all night. And then finally it would say, upload Complete, but think about that. So that was O two, you said two thousand. Uh, I think it was O two or O three. So yeah. that was only twenty two years ago, and a local news outlet was sent to cover a story like that. Yeah, think of how different those times were. Well, but Hubbard Broadcasting has led the way on that for a long time. Sure. We were the only TV station on that trip, but the Hubbards have believed really. You know, I, I don't know if you guys saw the special I did on the seventy fifth anniversary of the TV station. Since the very early days, back when like Bob Ryan was the the main anchor, they sent him all over the world. He covered the Korean War wow. and the Vietnam War. I mean, we sent local reporters all over the place, and we we do that to this day. Not as much as we used to. Not much we, in the budget. Zoom <laughs> Zoom is kind of killing a lot of that. Yes. Eh, we can just zoom it. Yeah, zoom it. We'll interview a guy via sure. Zoom right. from sure. Bosnia. Right. Uh, but if you want to go visit the troops and go with the governor visiting the troops, there's no better way to do it than being there in person. Right. And that's what we're called eyewitness news. We're not called iZoom news. Right. We're eyewitness news. What so are we called, important. Rook? What are we called? Uh, oh, a lot of things. Really? Have you read Twitter? Trying Let hard to make it news. Right. <laughs> trying hard to make it news. <laughs> right. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back. Uh, I need to point you guys in the direction of Where my are we friends going? at Hofferman Water. I just filled up all of the boys' water bottles before baseball, and then again this morning. It's saving me a lot of money by purchasing bottled water. Not so more in our family. Six one two. Is it eight. helping with their swing? Not really. You can't okay. no, Yeah, I can't fault them for gonna, that, though. We're not going to bring that up, though. Got it. 612-895-2440. That's the phone number that you need to call to get on the schedule for that free water analysis and have them stop out. That's how I established my relationship with Hofferman Water and Connecticut. I started out as a customer. You can also visit their website, which is HoffermanWater.com. They've been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. They offer sales, service, and rental options for Connecticut water treatment systems. That includes water softeners, iron, rust, and odor filtration systems, and brand new drinking water systems. And that's because a new system from Connecticut can do so many things that other water softeners just simply cannot do. It's going to cut down on your salt usage, but it's also going to protect your appliances. I'm not kidding. Your showers become better. Your laundry is better. So is your drinking water, your coffee, your cooking. Everything is better with Hofferman Water and Connecticut. 612-895-2440 or HoffermanWater.com. Please mention that you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Not a Garage Logic town council member. Here's what you're missing. When you do radio, you ask questions that you already know the answer to. Yeah, I know that. I was desperately trying long. to prevent Joe from starting an entire new topic because we needed a break. What? That's why I did that. Because we were looking for papers, and I said I didn't want you to start a new topic. You know I want you to take. I'm a break. sorry, I brought it up, Chris. It's, we probably shouldn't tell him about our process. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you I should have about? known it was a Joe I thing and not you, a Chris thing. Yeah, I saw you reaching for. <laughs> Material. Joe, never mind. No, I was reaching for the higher approval. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that because you didn't look at me for the old side. I saw you do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. What am I missing? What are you pulling over my eyes now? No, we're not. That Nothing. you need to be subtly guided in the right What's direction. Okay. We're here to help. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. Sushere reminding you to please give all privileges of the office of the mayor to today's deputy mayor in Garage Logic, which is Mr. Hauser. And this portion of the Garage Logic podcast is brought to us by our friends at North American Banking Company. Find them online today at nabankco.com. Well, we've managed to go this far by burying the real news today. Hmm. Did you know? I didn't. That the Niswa turtle races no. were in significant jeopardy until just recently. Well, turtles can swim, too. Why not just keep the lanes open? And this is go? not because of the floods. Oh. This is not because of the floods. You can imagine the reason for this. 
uh, there is a new state law. <laughs> Can I just stop right there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've got to find this I'm from here. the government, and I'm here to help. <laughs> I like turtles. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I'm from the government. I'm here to help, unless you're planning a turtle race. Okay. Now, the Star Tribune on their front page has a, uh, a story about the new state law protecting uh, the shelled species that uh, ended Niswa's traditional means of acquiring turtles for the races. They used to have a local bait shop that would go up there in May, and he would go out and bait and trap turtles turtles, because they they generally need about 100 turtles for these races. Then they put a little number on their back. Yeah, 13. And then they have them, the first one to get, I think, to the outer ring, because you can never get a turtle to go in a straight line. No. Unless, of course, they're crossing the road. Right, right. right. (laughs) When they're in mortal danger, (laughs) then they somehow find the wherewithal to go straight ahead. But anyway, you can't do that anymore. So by mid-May, the Nisswa Chamber of Commerce needed 100 turtles. By mid-May, they had two. Oh, boy. Really? So they had to put a... Those two needed to get to work. uh, Yeah. (laughs) They, exactly. I don't know what the gestation period is right. for uh, for turtles, but probably not long enough. So uh, anyway, they put out a call, I think, on their Facebook page or something, and they were able to get people to go out. It is not illegal for, like, you and me. When I was a kid, I don't know about you, I grew up not far from Nine Mile Creek, kind of okay. on the— uh, uh, along the Hopkins, Edina, Bloomington, you know, board. Triangle. I spent a lot of time in and around uh, Nine Mile Creek, and we would be down there catching toads and frogs and turtles, and uh, we, we used to trap. That's a whole other story. Maybe we'll save that Crawfish. story for tomorrow. I grew up in Edina. I used to trap muskrat. What? In Edina. Really? Edina. That, we'll talk, that is we're a different save, Edina right we're now. Wait, 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 wait. Where? Where in <laughs> along Edina? Along Nine Mile Creek. Along the creek. Really? really? Can't even correct them along the creek. Along the along creek. The creek. But anyway, uh, we'll save that story for tomorrow because yeah. even when I look back on it, you know, as you get to a certain age, you go, dang, did, did we really used to do that? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> one of the guys I used to trap with? Uh, one of Bob Allison's sons, uh, Kyle Allison. Oh, and really? I grew up together. Okay. We were neighbors with the Allison's. And uh, he and I and Gene O'Brien and Kent Bach, a few, a few of us, before school, we'd go check our traps before we'd head up to Valley Just like View. like Little House Middle in the school. Prairie, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. The one-room <laughs> schoolhouse. <laughs> you remind me, we got to talk more about trapping tomorrow. Okay, because, that's fine. Anyway, yeah. I want to stick to turtles right now. Uh, they put out a call, and so people went out. As you can imagine, there is an abundance of turtles in the Niswa Gull Lake area. Oh, sure, yeah, area. Yep. So people answered the call, and they started uh, bringing them in. And I didn't realize I was familiar with the Nisswa one because my family has gone up there uh, for for many years. I've never actually attended the turtle races, but was uh, would always you know look forward them. to the television coverage. <laughs> uh, but apparently uh, a lot of places do it. Longville, uh, Perham uh, does it. Uh, there's a lot of places. I had no idea uh, how... Uh, little we have to do to amuse amuse ourselves here in Minnesota. We have a lot of places that do turtle races, but luckily they were able to get the turtles. Now keep in mind they don't race the turtles. These are a lot like races to the death. They're not. It's not like yeah, it's not like, it's not uh, like dog gladiator. fighting. Yeah, you know. So what they do is yeah, you're not going Michael Vick on it. Right? No, yeah, exactly. Right, right. So when they're done, then they release them back into the wild. And so when this bait shop up there used to catch them, they would bring them. They had somebody who was in charge of a lot of the teenage kids would feed them and they'd have them like in a little holding pen pen area with water and they'd be fed and and taken care of. And then they would be released into the wild. Right on the free, right on the highway. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, get across here. If you make it, you win. Right next to, what is it, 371? Yeah, you make it, you win. (laughs) Yes. Just drop them off. I don't have yeah. to be the fastest. I just to be faster than you. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, it, it's funny because that reminds me of, uh, anyway, uh, long story short, the races are saved. They're going to happen around the 4th of July. The, they'll they'll be doing their, their races up in the Nisswa so area. So they found their number. This is a front page story, people. Right below the Trump uh, immunity ruling, <laughs> we've got turtles. We cover it all here we got it all. in, in the, the local media. But I'll never forget one time I was driving. I used to coach both my boys in baseball. One day, this was probably back around 2004, 2005, we're driving to practice, 
and there was this giant turtle. I mean, it was like, boy. In the middle of the road? Did, did you used to ride these at Como, Como. Zoo? Yeah, yep. I, remember, I remember that. They've put a stop to that, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyway, but we, boy, wasn't it great that to grow like up? It was like 150 years old, but you could go and ride the turtle. You could go ride the turtle. They've got the, uh, 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 what, a statue of it now or a yes. whatever, but you got you could go and ride that thing around Como Park. Yes. The zoo. Well, you wouldn't get around the whole zoo. No, you You'd go get 10 five feet, feet or something. Yeah. yeah, and then somebody, <laughs> then you want to go get the, uh, the mad scrambler or something. But it was, uh, what was my point to get? Oh, so Big we turtle. find this turtle, and it's right out in the middle of the road. And so we stopped, and because he was kind of stopped. And I go uh, to my son, Hobie, I go, we got to, there was a little pond. There was ponds on either side of the road, right off Lake Lucy Road. So we went and we we picked him up and took him the direction he was headed. I was going to say. Because sure. I go, I, I don't want to put him back to where he was. Because right. like, apparently, apparently he's got his GPS set on. the third time this week. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> the the message there. was at that yeah. side. Yeah. He's like, I got to go to that side. Was on well, the other that side. must have been the mating side. <laughs> the other side was where the boys sit around with cigars right. and right. tell stories about the ladies there on the other Harry. side. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Some TV guy just picked me up, right, fellas, right, and put me in this right. pond. <laughs> so we picked him up, took him, and put him in the wetlands area on the other side. And then uh, we took pictures of it. And so when we got to practice, this is the great thing about kids. Who knew? So we mentioned this at the outside of practice. We said, hey, kids, sorry, we're a couple minutes late. We were uh, dealing with this giant turtle. And one of the kids on my team was like an expert at turtles. He loved turtles. He had read books about turtles. We showed him the picture. I like turtles. It was that kid. <laughs> that might have been him. Yes. He was a heck of a third baseman, too, <laughs> which is funny. And... Uh, so we we showed him the picture, and he zooms in on it, and he goes, that turtle is probably, he guessed, I think 60 or 70 years old wow. based on the size of it. Wow. And I thought, that was really cool. My, my neighborhood was like three years old. Somehow this thing had survived. And it wasn't too far from people who know that. You know the area a little bit. Oh, yeah. Lake Lucy, Lake mm-hmm. Anne. Yep. There's a lot of There's water, a lot of wetlands. And then little there. tributaries yeah, sure. that, that run through. And so I don't know where he came from or where he was going or whether he he could still be alive today. What Google, what's the average lifespan of a turtle? Uh, I, let's see. In Minnesota, let's check well, that out. <laughs> well, average, now they're protected. Average right? lifespan of a turtle. Question mark. Let's see here. Uh, well, okay, this is kind of, this is according to TurtleConservationSociety.com, Tom Hauser. Yep. A typical pet turtle can live between 180 years or so, while larger species can easily live over 100 years. Wow. Some have even been known to live up to 150 years. Well, the one you were mentioning, Rook, at Como. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because so I'm seeing here, too, in captivity, these turtles typically live 20 to 30 years. But many can live much longer, especially if they're left to their own Because we've devices. got Tilly up in our house. William, how old's Tilly? She's seven. We, we've had her in the mix for about seven years now. Well, mm. tell the kids they got 23 to 30, 23 to, uh, and here's to what 27 I'll, years here's left. Here's what I don't get. So Tilly's about, she, when we got her, she was probably the size of, you know, a, a, a 50 cent piece. And then now she's she's about the size of my cell phone. Like she's a she's getting to be big. But every time I go to feed her, she dives under the rocks. Like she's terrified of me. Well, well she thinks I'm I a predator. I understand that. Yeah, I, I completely get it too. I don't. Are you saying you're not a predator? No, no. I, I promise okay. I'm not. Is this well, a, is Tilly it, should be nice to me. I'm the only one that feeds her. Is this a painted turtle? Is it one of those little pet? Does it you know? Mm, does it have like little colors? Orange. Is it, is yeah, she's got orange. Underneath? Yeah, yeah, then she's that's got a orange. Painted turtle. Yeah. Now. Um, this turtle we had, I can't remember if it was a big snapper, um, because you got to be careful. Like when we picked this one up, it had a because it was so big, it had a, a fairly long neck. Okay. Um, and yeah, you want to make sure, especially for swimming rook, you want to be careful if you get near uh, turtles with your speedo on. Yeah, that one is uh, legit. Uh, yeah, because the one, yeah, I'm pretty sure the one that we found was a snapper, because. Yeah, this I'm looking at some pictures. That looks like the guy. Haven't seen him since, hmm. but it was just funny. You get to baseball practice, some kid knows everything there is and more to know about turtles. In 1974, the zoo's favorite Galapagos tortoise, Toby, was moved to the Honolulu Zoo where he still lives today. Whoa, the one we used to ride at Como? The one we used to ride at Como. Wait, 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 wait. Now wait. I got to go to Honolulu. Hold on. No, no, no. That is such crap. 
They said, yeah, kids, we uh, we moved yeah, him to Honolulu. Well, he's, he's retired right. to Honolulu. He's been dead for 20 years. <laughs> I do remember this, too, vaguely. In 1972, zookeepers were forced to shoot Whitey, a male polar bear, to save a midnight visitor who fell into the bear grotto. With this, Ron Burgundy. Was that, Remember Ron Burgundy <laughs> fell into the bear? <laughs> oh, yeah. Grotto? Yes. yes. And then, and then we, wasn't he trying to save... Uh, the, Baxter. Uh, no, no, wasn't his uh, daughter? no uh, um, who was the anchor, the blonde hair, Miss Corningstone? Uh, oh, oh Miss Corningstone. Olivia. Was it Olivia Corningstone? What was her name? Whatever her name was. Veronica. Veronica, Veronica Corningstone. Corningstone. She had fallen in, and Baxter was in, then Ron Burgundy was in, and then Vince Vaughn was up above. So can and then I ask, the one guy lost his arm since, when he tried. <laughs> since you brought up the movie, when that came out, did you know, because for me, I remember... When Major League came out, a bunch of us guys that all played baseball together, we got together to watch the movie. Did yeah. you guys do the same thing with Anchorman? Did Absolutely. You, all the Channel 5 people kind of get together and watch I, the movie? Do you guys remember Brad Satin? He used to oh, be a reporter. For sure. Here. Brad, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brad, and Brad's out in the Philly area now, but we he had an apartment down in the North Loop. We had a party one night, and there were about... 15 or 20 of us there from Channel 5, maybe from a couple other stations. And we watched them. Now, we'd all no seen way. it by then, but then we all watched it together. Oh, that's great. Because the great thing about that movie, while it's a caricature of TV news, like any caricature, there are elements of, of truth. truth. Right. For sure. Every station has a Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Everyone, you know, has a Veronica Corningstone. Oh, let's start spilling guts. <laughs> Who's Ron Burgundy now at Channel 5? Yeah. I, am not gonna, I am not going to spill any guts sure. on that. Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, you can imagine uh, across the spectrum of stations here or anywhere you go, you can you can see. <laughs> right. And then uh, it's it is very and even the, the movie broadcast news. Did you guys ever see that? Oh yeah, that was love a, that. That was a pretty accurate portrayal. Right. Not even the a caricature. The, the running with the tape. Do you remember? Get, yes, you probably yes. did that. Yes, you, I had the, I was Betamax when I was a dispatcher. The, I remember times we'd be in an edit booth and. You know, the, the photographer finally finishes the last edit, and then I'll be standing right behind him, and then the, the tape runner is right behind me, and you're just, you hit eject, and then you hear this, all the worrying. Like, <laughs> oh, come on, for the love of God, come out of that machine. Yeah, yeah. And then you had to make sure you didn't pull it too fast, or the, the tape, tape was going to unthread. Yes. So you had to oh, wait till it came out cleanly. He'd pull it out, hand it to me, I'd hand it to the tape runner, and then... Up at, to master at, control. At Channel 5 here, it's a long run up a ramp, and then you have to take a right, and then up a flight of stairs, and then another right, and then a left Make sure down the to master control. Make sure isn't open, you know, like they did broadcast news when she almost gets clocked. No, and, my, and you would, people would run in, you know, you'd see somebody run, and everybody would just get out of the way. <laughs> at, at Channel 13 down in, in WHO, where I used to work, we talked yesterday about it. I was down there for a reunion. The edit bays... The news set and the feed point for the tapes were all in the newsroom. So it just had to come out of one edit bay, go like one, two, three, or four doors down. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this. Run up the maze. Yeah. And so you could get it. And then the anchors would also know, you know, because a lot of times they'll say, just go ahead and read the intro. The tape is on its way. And you would go, yeah, sure it is. (laughs) And they would just say, you know, take your time, but it's going to be there. You would have an idea of whether the producer was pulling your leg or not by whether you saw frantic activity behind you sure. that the viewer wouldn't see, but you'd know was you going know, on. You know, Jill, you have a nice blouse on tonight yeah. uh, while we're waiting here. So, no, I think what yeah, I'm then he- human resources <laughs> yeah, would right, call right, right after right. the news con- I, I think was What over. I'm hearing Tom say, Rook, is that he thinks Doogie needs to be more of the David Kirshner character with the champ with the cowboy yes, hat yes, on yes. to really bring in the sports <laughs> audience. Whammy! Let's try it out. Let's try it out. <laughs> you know what, though? Knowing Doogie, he'd do it. He put the cowboy hat on. It's, he's getting paid. Checks well, clearing every two weeks. It's, it's kind of, you know, I when I think of rookie, I always think about it's really just the pleat in his pants. Oh, for sure. Where did you get those pants? That's really a goodwill. What, goodwill. No, the pants store. Remember? That's what Oh, the pants Ron store. Burgundy. Yes, that's right. Yes. yes. The, pants the pants store. store. So the cannonball scene lamp. where he's t- 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 telling everybody, uh, I've got breaking news or whatever, yes. and then he announces cannonball. Oh, yeah. That's not really how you guys celebrate outside of the newsroom. Oh, we've had some parties that are. <laughs> Very, you know, not so much in recent years, but in my younger days in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Oh, I'm sure. And even down in Des Moines, there were some pretty raucous, fun parties. Um, ah, youth. Yes, youth. Because, you know, at those smaller stations, 
everybody's single, everybody's new, everybody's just passing through. Right. You know, once you get to a destination station or a destination market like the Twin Cities, a lot of us are here for the long haul. Right. <laughs> so, now you're bogged down by all these damn kids and, and everything else. And then everybody else. gets married right. and has kids, and you're going, yeah, I'd love to go out for a happy hour, but I got a ball game, I got a hockey game, I got to go rescue a turtle. Well, it's so street. funny because the other night, um, con- and congratulations to Lori and Julia, they had their their farewell show uh, last Thursday at the Fillmore, and a bunch of the younger staff were saying, well, where are we going to go after this? I said, I'm going home. <laughs> right. Like, well, what do you mean, where are we going after this? I'm going home to, I got baseball practice, and then I got to be in bed by 8.45. I, like, I do get, talking about? I do get some grief in the newsroom, because sometimes I'm the first one who's willing to go to happy hour, as ah. opposed to the last one. But so. now it's no. it's full circle, because now you're an empty nester, pretty yeah, much, my right? Yeah, youngest, my youngest uh, is 22, just graduated from college. Wow. So, yeah, it's... But even in between time, there was always time for happy hour, always time for fellowship among fellow broadcasters. Yes, that's how everybody got along. Right. Yes. <clears throat> Giving each other crap left yep. and right. Well, Tom, thank you, sir. Tomorrow, we're going to talk trapping, about how people actually would trap animals in the city of Edina. Really? It's just, it, I learned I this did from it my brother. I did Case Drew Drop Pond. Did you really? Yes, it, I did. But, but we it, didn't really trap, but we went fishing over there to catch little bullheads. But bull it was a or... whole different, we used to accidentally sometimes catch mink or fox. Oh, well, it's close I mean, to Edina, it, of course. Raccoons, catch mink. occasionally a skunk, and then it was up to somebody to, okay, who's going to deal with the, yeah. the skunk? Because you had to get the, the animal out of the trap. And now I know it sounds barbaric. I don't think most we garage logic him. listeners will. We no. didn't hurt them. It was just well, fun we to did, trap. We, we did when we skinned them and made gloves out of them. Okay, right. That one, Cru- Cruella de Vil. And then Cruella we sold Hauser. it to the gas station in Bosnia okay, or wherever. They were muskrats. <laughs> Let's not forget the last the last uh, three letters in muskrat is rat. Correct. Right? So right. there wasn't a lot of tears shed about that. They're a disgusting, Although vile creature. there may creature. have been a mink, uh, yeah. a mink glove. Do you, did you, either of your... Your parents probably aren't old enough. Yours might be. Those crazy mink stoles where they looked like the actual yes, animal. Yes, where it was just Like the, with the full head, it was yes, just... I, I, and we they, didn't they, have them, but I knew people that You would that see did. them. Yes, yes, yeah, you would and see them. It was... It was pretty creepy. Bob when, didn't. Uh, Bob didn't roam around the, uh, the the mean streets of Winona no, with one of those. No, Bob. On. Uh, we didn't. He didn't quite. Uh, <laughs> uh, he didn't quite catch that one yet. But, Look at uh, here. Yeah. Right. right. We're gonna talk trapping tomorrow. My final day filling in this week. Fa- thank you very much, Mr. Hauser. And, and thanks also, to us. Uh, also thanks to our friends at Renewal by Anderson that would normally bring you this day in history, but Rook and I are not working that hard on 4th of July week. As Windows we you can see through. That's the way Joe likes to describe them. That's key. What? I don't know. I think you did. Okay. Okay. Anywho, we'll just uh, delete that. Please do us a favor and subscribe to the Garage Logic YouTube channel because we are posting daily content for your amusement. And you can also sign up for the daily logician email, and you can find that online at the website, which is, of course, garagelogic.com. Sean. It is time once again that we check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic, and now is the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and he is there for you for that free, yes, I said the word free, 48-minute financial consultation with absolutely zero obligation. And he will always give you the straight talk. He will never give you the sugar-coated advice. And he is on the line with us once again here in Garage Logic. And boy, Josh, the market still wants to talk about the Fed, but you want to listen to who? I, I want to listen to Kinky Friedman and the Texas Jew Boys. Beautiful. If you have not heard Kinky Friedman and the Texas Jew Boys, I know this is an old, old country western group uh and i know i bring this thing this up because the kingster passed away last last week and when i heard that i had to just bring out my old vinyl album and you can go on to to spotify or uh apple apple music and download uh, 
the Kingster and the Te- Texas Jew Boys album Sold America or Sold American, uh, which dates back to, I think, about 1975. And listen to the Kingster and some of the some of the songs on that that album, stuff like "Put Your Biscuits in the Oven and Your Buns in the Bed," stuff like "They Don't Make Jews Like Jesus Anymore." Some unbelievable songs, and you're going to have to pay attention to the to the lyrics, and you'll get a good laugh. And then you'll realize it's no wonder that this guy did not get elected governor of Texas uh, that he tried to, do, to, to get twice. But in any case, other than, the, than listening to Kinky Friedman and the Texas Jew Boys, the market uh, has been paying attention again to, to, the, to the Fed. Earnings have, uh, are on the down low now for the next couple of weeks until um, about the third week in, in July when bank earnings start. And then we're going to have uh, tech, tech earnings, et cetera, going into the end of July and into August, talking about how this past quarter uh, did. But uh, today... Um, there was a, a meeting in Spain with all the central bankers and others to discuss the direction of interest rates and whether or not uh, inflation is under control. The Fed, uh, Fed chief uh, Jay Powell said at this meeting that we're on the right path, but we still need, and the Fed still needs, several months of data uh, to show that the path down towards their 2% inflation target is sustainable before the Fed will even consider cutting rates or loosening uh, monetary policy. Uh, My concern is that the Fed could overstay their their plan and keep uh, monetary policy uh, too tight for too long, which could stall out the economy. Uh, and that could be shown in the next uh, GD, uh, excuse me, yeah, GDP report that um, should be coming out uh, in the next, the next few weeks. Bear in mind, the last GDP report showed that the economy was only growing at 1.3%. Uh, which was down substantially from where it was at the end of last year. So, and a lot of that GDP still comes from government spending, and the government is spending a lot of, is still spending a lot of money, which in my estimation is still a contributor uh, to to inflation. Uh, the other big contributors in terms of the uh, CPI number still has to do with housing, and while housing prices have leveled off, they haven't come come down. Uh, and wage growth is uh, is still going up, uh, and we still fortunately have a lot of people uh, people working. But the market is still concerned a little bit with with the Fed. Me, um, I know that's out there, but I still look at what companies are doing uh and how they're they're responding and companies uh have been doing well for at least the companies that i i track and my focus as we've talked before has been companies involved in the internet uh leisure related businesses china related businesses and real assets uh and the internet related companies in particular such as Favorites Apple, Amazon uh, have been in fuego recently. Uh, Amazon has recently hit two hundred dollars a share. I've up my target to that to from two hundred to two fifty. Uh, Apple um, hit a new high of a little above two hundred and twenty dollars uh, today on the back of 
their introduction of Apple intelligence of, at their Worldwide Developers Conference. Going to be some interesting things happening over the next few months, something that you need to pay attention to. And, oh, by the way, uh, two things. Keep, keep some cash on the sidelines for the inevitable market pullback and ha- have a very happy and healthy 4th of July. Same to you, Mr. Money Talk, and excellent advice, as always. Well, you heard him, G. Others. Now is the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial consultation with absolutely zero obligation. And you do that by dialing 952-925-5608, where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, as always, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Enjoy your abbreviated week, and we'll talk to you again next week. Look forward to it, Chris. Happy 4th of July. Same to you, sir. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.